Hey everyone, it's That Math Magician, and on this video we're going to take a look at geometric sequences, and more specifically, how to create an equation to match the sequence. Now just like with our arithmetic sequences, there are two big components that help set up that equation. For arithmetic sequences, we needed to know the common difference and the zero term. For geometric sequences, we still need to know that zero term, but we don't need to know the common difference because there is no common difference in a geometric sequence. Instead, we'll need to look at the common ratio. Now let's go ahead and write out the formula for that equation, and then we'll see how we can use it to find the equations of these two sequences here. Now, the formula for how to find the equation for a geometric sequence starts off with t of n equals, just like our arithmetic sequence. We're looking at the term number. That's what we're trying to find. So we start off with t of n equals, and then we need to know what our value for t of zero is. So t of zero is, again, so important for us to know because it helps us find our equation for the matching sequence. So we have t of zero, then we want to multiply that by our common ratio, our common ratio of R. I'm gonna go ahead and write that in a red pen so it can match the color scheme that I've been using. So we have T of zero times R, but the only thing we're missing here is that N value, right? The place in the sequence that we're looking at. That N value for us will actually end up being an exponent on our common ratio. That's it. That's the generic form for the equation for a geometric sequence. T of n equals T of zero, the zero term, times your common ratio to the nth power. Now let's see how we could actually use this. Over here on my left sequence, let's go ahead and now make that equation for this sequence. So we start off with t of n equals, we need t of zero. Well, we know that t of zero is two over three, or it was 0 0.667. I'm gonna just use the fraction, it looks a little nicer. So we have t of n equals two thirds times our r, or our common ratio. So times, I'm gonna go ahead and put that in parentheses, our common ratio, our common ratio here is three to the nth power. And that right there is our equation for this sequence. T of n equals two thirds times three to the nth power. I'm just using this formula here to help us set up that equation. Now let's go ahead and do the one on the right as well and then we'll see how helpful it is to have these equations. So I'm gonna go ahead on the right and again, start off with the same T of n. T of n equals, I now need to write down that zero term. Well, we found our zero term to be 32. So we know T of n equals 32 times our common ratio. Now remember for our common ratio on the right example, we had it two ways, right? As a fraction or as a decimal. Again, it doesn't matter which way you do it, just make sure that you're being consistent. So for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and write 0 0.5. I'm gonna leave it as a decimal. Don't forget that that is to the nth power. Now, what's really nice about these two equations that we have now is again, let's say there was a question for this sequence and it wanted to know what is the 100th term? Again, you could sit there with a calculator and keep punching in times three times three all the way for the first equation a hundred times. You could even do times 0.5 times 0.5 a hundred times to find it. But what's really nice is that once you have this equation set up, the only thing you have to do is take your equation, change n, to be the number that you wanna find in the sequence. We wanna find the 100th term. So I plug in 100 there, and then you just rewrite your equation here. But instead of being to the nth power, 
we're gonna have three to the 100th power. Same thing on the right here. T of 100, because we wanna know the 100th value in that term. We look over here and we write 32 times 0 0.5, and we plug in N as 100. Now I'm not gonna go ahead and do this actually on the calculator because for these two sequences here, the numbers are going to be insane. Think about it this way. We're taking these numbers here and we continue to multiply it by three. By the time I get to the 100th term, that is going to be a huge number, insane. And if you wanna try it at home, get out your calculator, plug this in, do three to the 100th power times two thirds, that number is going to be huge. Same thing, but the opposite way for our sequence on the right. We're looking for the 100th term. Well, as we keep moving along this sequence, that number is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. We keep timesing it by 0.5. It's gonna keep getting increasingly small. When you plug this into your calculator, I wouldn't be surprised if your calculator rounds that to zero because that number is gonna be so tiny that your calculator won't even be able to distinguish the tiny number and zero. It'll just round to zero. But that's why these equations are so helpful for us because they allow us to find any number in the sequence just by plugging in that number for n. All right, guys, it's That Math Magician, and I'll see you on the next video.